Well, good Sunday morning. I'm Jaden Jefferson, and welcome to this week's Community Focus. Joining me right now is Caleb Hutton, and he is the local news editor at the Daily Herald in Everett, Washington. Thanks for joining me. Of course. Thank you. So I had saw a tweet you had put out, and there is a strike happening at your paper. So kind of talk to me about this strike and really the significance of it. Yeah, sure. So we're uh, a paper that covers about, a, you know, close to a million people in two counties north of Seattle and Washington. Um, and uh, for about two years, there has been a dispute between um, ownership here and um, the reporting and photography staff um, over uh, after, after a unionization effort. And so um, this past week, um, after a, a change in ownership that um, that came earlier this year, um, the uh, the the management uh, laid off twelve of our employees, um, including myself, in the newsroom. As a result, um, and as a result of some other things that happened over the course of the week, um, the uh, staff here decided to go on strike. Um, and that's the unionized staff. I'm I'm actually a supervisor, so um, I'm technically here at the office today, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, so they've been out. They're they're right outside our offices, as far as I know, right now, um, waving signs, picketing, um, talking about how local journalism matters in, in our community. And this story I could really relate to because in Toledo, we've had a similar situation where these agreements, ha disagreements occur, where there's obviously the issue of low pay, but at the same time, management saying that there's not enough money in the budget. And this is a story that you can really hear in a lot of different towns. And so why do you think all of a sudden now workers are really starting to rise up and really demand more from management? Um, well, I think in, in our case, you know, um, this has been something that's been talked about for a really long time. Um, I think what finally prompted some action on the part of the union was the layoffs last week. I mean, we've we've seen that in um, newsrooms across across the country. Um, there was some nervousness when uh, we got new owners um, earlier this year. Um, you know, you just you don't know what's going to happen and what their um, standards are going to be, what their staffing levels are going to look like, what their you know philosophy is. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I guess people were in, in the newsroom were, were quite disheartened to find out, um, that we'd be, you know, our, our staff would be cut in half. Um, and, uh, it, to the point that, you know, they strike yesterday and they're still striking today. Sometimes there are good changes that come out of these disagreements, but in other cases, it's still newsrooms being left with smaller staffs but being asked to do more. How does that even work? <laughs> that is an excellent question. I, I, I think that it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's, um, I don't know how you squeeze more out of fewer people. Um, it's, uh, I, I've, I've worked in newsrooms that have shrunk and, and it's just a, a fact of how things go. People can only do so much good work. Um, the quality of the work um, certainly, uh, is reflected in the number of people who are able to pick up the slack around, um, different reporters. Um, and, uh, I don't know what, what secret sauce, um, you know, they think they might have here, but, uh, I, you know, I've been doing this for, for over a decade now and, um, you know, the bigger newsrooms tend to get the better scoops <laughs> and more of them. And, um, yeah, that's, it's a great question. It's a great question for Carpenter Media. One of the key words that comes to mind when I think about this work is obviously people that pay and subscribe to their local papers. And when you do that, you really may not realize just the impact that that has because digital makes it a lot harder to make money. And so when people are still subscribing, there are a lot of things that newsrooms benefit from that. And so when people say, oh, I don't want to pay this, what really are they missing out on and what does the newspaper miss out on when they don't have that subscription? You know, journalism isn't free. You know, you gotta, you gotta pay people to go out, do the interviews. Um, you know, then you have to pay people to get photos. You have to pay people to design the paper. You have to pay people to deliver the paper, or even if it's just an online outfit where you might have, you know, lower over overhead, um, you know, you're still producing 
stories like not a lot of people have time to just go sit down in the courthouse and and watch a you know a civil case or a, a murder trial or something for two weeks straight but that's kind of what we um end up doing a lot of the time is the stuff that you know if if we weren't there then nobody would be just sitting there watching and then reporting back to the community hey here's the the bite-sized version of what happened um in a way that's you know clear and easy to follow because um I, I don't know what you've found Jaden, in, in uh in you know about the world but like a lot of the time it's really hard to summarize stuff um and it takes talented people to to make things understandable sometimes um yeah i mean it's it's so, so much of it is just like sifting through mountains of court documents and then you know picking out the most relevant pieces that still capture what's um what's important um while not leaving anything significant out um so it's as much of an art as it is a as it is a um a science i guess yeah, I think many of us journalists benefit from having someone in our life that tells really long stories because it helps make our job a lot easier when we know, yeah, not all of that was needed. So that's always good to have that in your life, at least someone that can do that for you. But yeah, I mean, it's really true. A lot of this work, you can only do so much and only fit so many ads in on top of that before it becomes excessive. So the solution in some cases really isn't clear. In terms of your paper, what do you hope the outcome is in this current tense time? Um, that's, that's an interesting question. Cause you know, I, I feel very close to this, uh, to this whole story. You know, I'm, I'm somebody who's directly affected by it. And yet I, I feel like I have to have a little bit of personal distance from it as much as possible. And it's just impossible in this case, you know, um, you know, they, they teach you in journalism school about, you know, you, you try to be as objective as you possibly can. And yet, you know, sometimes you're going to run into, uh, into something that, you know, you can't, um, that, that you're just going to run into some ethical questions, you know, and this is probably the very thorniest one that I've ever encountered where it's like, how do I feel about this? How can I report on this? How can I be fair to everybody on all sides when I am, uh, you know, kind of a, a character in the whole thing, at least a bit player. Um, so, um, to answer your question, what do I hope comes out of it? I hope that Everett has, uh, you know, a robust um, crew of journalists that continue in this um, in this area. I, I, uh, you know, Carpenter Media has has told us that their goal is the long term health of the paper, and I can frankly, you know, understand that. Like sometimes you have to make really hard decisions um, about, you know sorry, we can't support 12, you know, journalists here anymore. Um, it's just not financially feasible anymore in, in the year 2024 with newspapers. Um, so, um, I, I am rooting for the people who are still here. Absolutely. I, I want, um, I want them to do their best work and I just, uh, I guess I am, you know, as journalists, we're naturally skeptical, uh, I think. And um, I definitely, um, you know, I, I hope that the long-term vision is there from the ownership group to, um, you know, continue to do, you know, something even close to the caliber of work we've been able to do here over the past, you know, decades. For sure. And the business side of this is never fun. So I'm definitely also hoping for the best outcome for you as well. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much, Jaden. Thank you. And that's this week's Community Focus. I'm Jaden Jefferson. Have a great rest of your week. Mm -hmm.